Francis, the Predator Nganu, welcome to The Daily Show. Thank you, Trevor. It's a great pleasure to be here. You know, this is, this is such a great experience for me having you here because we, we have so many similarities, you and I. We are both, uh, I know. you know, we're both African, right? Yeah. You know, we, we both uh, ply our trade in, in different nations and different continents. And then also, I believe that according to the last statistics, you and I both share the strongest punch ever recorded in the UFC. We, we do. Yeah, they said when you combine our punch, it is the strongest punch ever come ever in the UFC, which is amazing. Welcome to the show, man. This is this is great to have you here, champ. Thank you. And you you, you forget to mention other th mention other thing that we are we are uh, you and I we have in common, which is it's like uh, a shock for American culture. <laughs> <laughs> I think everyone has that when they come here. Everyone everyone experiences yeah. that. In a, what's the what's the biggest thing that has shocked you about about being in America? Is how sometimes they treat they treat kids. People complain, uh, kids complain, and how they treat them. Right. You know, like usually when I was kid, if I complain <laughs> about something, I had a slap. <laughs> and here I'm like, oh, please eat your food, Junior. Please, baby, eat it. <laughs> oh man. I'm like, I'm like, send Junior in Africa for two days. When Junior <laughs> ke comes back, he will be eating all his food. They will realize how how uh, blessed uh, they are, and right? they will be so grateful. Yeah, bro. Well, like... let's 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 talk a little bit about your life, you know, because a lot of people know you now as the champion, the heavyweight champion of the UFC. A lot of people know you as one of the hardest hitters in the world. But man, so many people don't understand your story in getting there. Like, you know, it's almost like winning the championship was one of the easiest things in your life because of how hard your life was. You know, you grew up in Cameroon. You lived a really tough life where, you know, you, you, you were living with different families, you were separated from your mother, then you were reunited. And I mean, at the age of 11, if, if, if my research is correct, you were working in a stone quarry. Yeah, uh, in the stone quarry. I mean, uh, he was, uh, since, even since age of nine, nine and 10 or 10, like this, something like that. And we were, I was very uh, small at the time and those jobs was meant for adults, but we didn't have any choice. Uh, and it, we didn't have choices, so we have to go there and like beg for a job. You were struggling. You couldn't get food in school. You, you you couldn't even afford to stay in school. And at some point, you decided, as Francis, I'm gonna work as hard as I can. I'm gonna save all the money I can. And then you made a really interesting decision. You decided to get into boxing. Why, why did you think boxing would take you out of that life? For multiple reasons, they will always kick me out of the school. So I was a subject of embarrassment. And so I was, I didn't want to be embarrassed anymore. So uh, therefore I decided that I need, I need to do something that's gonna outstand me from all those kids. And so they can see that I'm not worthless, you know? Then combined with the desire of my reputation and, uh, and everything, my love with uh, combat sport, that's when I came across with uh, boxing and I was 13 years old. But problem, there is not a gym, boxing gym in the 100 miles radius. So how can I do boxing? Nowhere. Then after years go by, I left school, then stay in the village a couple of years. And I, I was 22 by that time. And the dream, that dream was still inside of me, like a fire. I was thinking about it all the time. I decided then to move on to the city, go chase my dream. You then go to Morocco. You then go to Spain. You get arrested in Spain for coming into the country illegally. You still manage to make your way out of that and go to France, where you then build a life. And you really, it, it really is, you know what they would call it here is the American dream, you know, is that Francis Ngannou goes, I'm going to make something of myself. And you move from boxing to the UFC where you're now the champion. And now it feels like the whole world is watching you. I mean, Cameroon, you're a hero. You know this. In Africa, you're a hero. In the world, people go, this guy is, is not just a champion, but he's one of the most dynamic fighters to watch. You've got a, a huge fight coming up against an opponent who is 10 and 0, perfect record. So I'd, I'd love to know like what you think you expect or what we should expect from this fight, because it doesn't seem like it's gonna be easy, even though you have some of the quickest knockouts ever recorded in UFC history. Uh, a fight will never be easy. When you're going to fight a man, you don't know what will happen. You know, there's not a fight that uh, is gonna be easy, but he's a tough guy. Um, he's a very good, talented uh, opponent and very good contender for me, but, uh, you know, 
the fact that you say something like the perfect record, there's not a perfect record. And I have seen 10 and 0 before. Mm. It's not my first mm. 10 and 0. Mm. <laughs> and God knows what happened to those 10 and 0. I mean, all your fans are behind you. Everyone can't wait to see what's going to happen in this fight. Um, one of the things people are also waiting to see is what happens after the fight. You, you're not the only UFC fighter who's come out and said, you feel like you should be getting paid more. The sports is making so much money now. It's becoming one of the most widely watched sports in the world. And, and you have said very publicly, you said, guys, Francis Ngannou deserves more money. I know this is the last fight that you've been contracted to um, in, in the UFC. You know, what do you, what do you see for yourself in the future and what do you hope that the sport will learn to appreciate from you? Well, for the future, I uh, see. Um, I see. Uh, I expect uh, to have a, a better contract, better contract structure. Something that put me in the safe position. You know, I'm doing a sport that is very risky, yeah. very uh, tough, and the sport is generating generating money. And I just need. I'm not asking to share, but I just need to have some respect to see that I'm worth it. I mean, we we need to grow. We need to be saved. We need uh, um, insurance. We need her insurance. You are doing a sport that you're putting yourself on the line, your health, and you don't even have guarantee. And those for those fighters who have the minimum uh, salary, uh, they can't even afford a, uh, to pay for their injury. They can't right, even afford right, right. a physical therapy. They can't even afford a good uh, her care. Nothing. What I respect about you as well is that you don't just want that for yourself. You also want it for other fighters. And, and you also want that for other human beings. Talk to me about, like, what you're trying to do and what you dream of doing in Cameroon for kids who grew up in a world that you grew up similar to. Personally, I know how I feel when I meet somebody like that, when I have a chance. I always look up to somebody like The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, and recently uh, he notices me you know, and now we even chat, I text, and the rock texts back, and sometimes <laughs> he lets me a voice mate. When, and then when I wake up someday, just listen to a the rock voice, uh, voice message, you know, I go out there that day, I work double of what I sh I wow, supposed to work. that's amazing, like, man. I'm just motivated. I'm like, damn, the rock just leave me a message. This is it, you know. The enthusiasm, the motivation of that, just his message, you know, and then I realize how, how great is it to be in the position that you have that power to like maybe just talk to somebody and change his day wow. or his life. And I, I want to be the same thing, the same thing for others. Basically, knowing from where I came from, that's what we need. We just need hope. From my experience, I believe that somebody that has hope and self-believing is a successful person. Doesn't right. matter if you have zero uh, dollar in your bank account, that faith will push you out there and then will uh, make you um, a successful person. Well, Francis Ngannou, you're a champion both in and out of the octagon. Thank you so much for joining me on the show. We look forward to the fight. We look forward to the future. And uh, hopefully, uh, I'll see you again in person, my friend. Thank you so much. Thank you, Trevor. It's been a great pleasure to meet you finally. The pleasure's all mine, my friend. The pleasure's all mine. Thank UFC you. 270, Nganu versus Gain, takes place January 22nd, and you can watch it on ESPN+. Plus.